So we are unable to use geo geometrical reasoning to calculate the uh, cross-section area times the length and all that. That would have been a calculus question. But suppose if suppose the tube has been kind of uh, old and used, some sections are a bit bloated, you know, and others are skinny. So it is uneven, right? It is uneven. Now, uh, with uneven kind of tube, something like what you see here, perhaps I just uh, extend it. So there are some blobs and um, protrusions along the length of the, cube, uh, the, the tube, and they're not even. Okay, so water gushes in from the top, and then it sort of goes through, fills up everything with uneven and irregular kind of uh, uh, volume throughout the length of the, of the green hose. And suppose, despite it all, our initial experiment measures still 10 seconds for the water to reach, and with a pressure meter, we find that it is still 2 liters per second for the water to the, the speed of the water entering into the tube or exiting from the tube. Uh, what is our conclusion? Conclusion is still, Little's Law tells us, 20 liters will be wasted. Same. That's how powerful Little's Law is. It doesn't quite matter whether the tube is irregularly shaped. Okay, because for all the irregularities, it would affect the measurement of timing. Perhaps it might, it might change it to 9.8 seconds. Maybe it will lengthen it to 11.2 seconds, right? But we did say that, uh, let's just assume that despite it all, it is still 10 seconds. Then in that case, conclusion will be exactly the same, that 20 liters of water would have been trapped in the green hose. So this is how powerful Little's Law is. Regardless of the distribution, regardless of the, <clears throat> the shape, the geometrical shape of the Little's Law enclosure, uh, the principles here must be followed. Okay, so if that is true for any arbitrary enclosure, you find that we can also arbitrarily enclose just the just the Q side of the Q system. Okay, all right. So we let's say we are now interested in exploring just the Q side of the Q system. So we draw a little slot enclosure. Incoming traffic is lambda, and it takes. Of course, we said that before. Suppose we know that. It takes WQ uh, seconds or minutes for the entity to wait through the queue on average. Some, some entities may wait longer. Some entities may not wait at all. But on average, it is of, of timing WQ. Then we ask, how long is the queue? Right. So Little's law of asking is, what's the average entities trapped in the enclosure? But that's what we think of as the Q size, right? Q length in queuing theory. So what we're going to say is applying Little's law, LQ is basically equal to the traffic, average incoming traffic times the amount of time an identified entity of the traffic traverses through the Little's law enclosure, which is the Q component. So this gives rise to our second uh, formula here, which is not surprising because we are just reapplying Little's Law. Now, of course, we can try another interesting thing, which is we haven't applied Little's Law on just the server itself. Can we do that? Answer is absolutely, absolutely. Because Little's Law is not uh, tied to queuing system. We can use Little's Law within queuing system and anywhere within or, or the entire system. So we can say, let's apply a little slot enclosure around the server. Okay, so incoming traffic, well, it first, the traffic first enters the, enters the queue system via the queue component. So it goes in at the rate of lambda, and of course it comes out at the rate of lambda. Has to be, has to be. If it comes out at the rate of lambda, it better channel into the server servicing area server at the rate of lambda because anything less means we have some waste, some filtering, right? Anything more means we are injecting more traffic somehow within the queue system. And that is not allowed from the queue system's definition because tra traffic can only enter uh, at the starting point of the queue component. 
So therefore, we conclude that the rate of entry into this Little's Law analysis is lambda. How long does it take to traverse through the, the server itself? Well, earlier on, we already made the, the observation that uh, this would be lambda times ws. So by Little's Law, we conclude that the amount of traffic or entities stuck within this Little's Law confinement is lambda times ws. Nice. In other words, what is LS measuring? LS is measuring the average number of customers, right? Therefore, another way to think about this result is average number of customers in the server's servicing area all right, is equal to lambda times 1 over s, which we also earlier on reasoned that it is 1 over mu. So it will be lambda divided by mu. Lambda divided by mu was identified to be rho, isn't it? So rho will be how busy the server is. That's from the server's perspective. And LS counts how many customers on average are seated or positioned at the servicing area. That is from the customer's perspective. Now the two formulas are exactly the same because of the exact definition that a server is busy only when it faces the customer, isn't it? So it's not surprising that if we have lambda over mu number of average customers there, then the server will be busy lambda over mu uh, amount of time. So that's exactly in sync with our analysis and definition. Okay, so we see that it is quite, uh, it has quite extensive implications despite the fact that it is so, so simple in its relationship. So that's Little's Law, and we should understand it well because it will also help us to understand some of the relationships between the formulas. Uh, there'll be a bunch of formulas in what we are going to discuss next, but some of them are related in what way? Because of Little's Law. And we can then, uh, it will help us to understand the formulas because it's a direct consequence of Little's Law and um, not intimidate us so much in terms of uh, being overwhelmed by so many formulas. See you in the next video.